Everybody bring a Bible? I'm glad. You're going to need it. 2 Corinthians 11. Satan. This is Satan 101. Elementary, elementary uh, classroom on Satan. Knowing your enemy. His personality. His being. Um, and I have... In the future coming up, we're going to study his power. What power does the devil actually have? What power does he not have? Um, just as a preview of that, I'm going, to, I'm going to ask you a question. Can, and, and there are churches that believe this. So, um, do you believe that Satan or a devil can... Enter in and possess a born-again Christian. Well, that was a not unanimous then. Anonymous. A born-again, Bible-believing Christian. Okay? The answer is no. Now, where's your scripture on that? There you go. That's a good one. You're sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Meaning... He can't, he can't get in to a sealed believer's throne. There's only room on the throne for one person. It's either going to be God or it's only going to be Satan. Now, the reason why I bring this up is that there are churches, probably the way out there churches, that... Teach that you are a Christian, but you can be possessed by devils, and that's why you curse all the time, or that's why you are running out on your wife all the time. It's because you have a devil, and that needs to be cast out. And I think that's just an excuse for bad behavior. That's what I think. People, people make this, oh, you've got, a, you've got this devil. He's got to be cast out of you, or you have the devil of pneumonia. Or you have the devil of a cough or whatever. And that's, a lot of that started with Fennis Dake, uh, who said that your health is equated to your salvation. And as a Christian, you should never let disease enter in you to begin with. And if you do, if you do have a disease then you must, in faith, cast it out like it was a devil. And if you don't do that, then you're not saved or you lost your salvation. And um, if you get the devil out, then you can get your salvation back. And he was just nuts. And, by, and he died of a disease that he could not get rid of. So it didn't work very well for him. But he wanted it to work for everybody else. Uh, but anyway, uh, so we're going to talk about eventually, in, in a future, I've already got the notes put together, how much power does the devil actually have? What can he do? What is he not allowed to do? What is it that he can't do? And so on. So we're going to examine that uh, a little bit later on. Uh, this morning, though, we're going to look at, we looked at uh, places where the Bible talked about he is, he is a corrupter of things. And uh, let me just put this up on the screen real quick. First Peter 1.18 For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as or such as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. In other words, you cannot be redeemed by money. So if any, and I don't care if it's Catholic or whatever, if any religious organization tries to get money out of you for some sort of religious benefit, that's not God. That's the devil. That is satanic. He is a, he corrupts God's mercy and God's, if God said that salvation was a gift, then how is it that you earn or merit a gift? You don't. Can you give a gift to somebody that you hate? Absolutely, absolutely. A free gift to somebody that you hate. In fact, the Bible tells us to do that, to, to bless your enemies because in doing so, you're going to heap coals of fire on their head because they don't understand that kind of love.
for an enemy. They don't get that. But anyway, you're not redeemed by silver or gold or by any kind of offering that you bring to God. And this kind of fits in with um, what I'm going to preach this morning. I'm going to re-preach last Sunday's sermon. Hopefully I'll do it a little bit better. I feel better. Thank you everybody for praying for me. When you feel better, you just feel better. Okay? And I feel better. But anyway, you cannot, you cannot bring money, you cannot bring gifts to God. He doesn't need them, and He doesn't accept them. You cannot pay God anything for salvation, or for healing, or for any kind of blessing whatsoever. You do not pay God for those things. He will not take your money. He doesn't need it. And if he, God says, if I were hungry, I wouldn't tell you. I wouldn't tell mankind if I was hungry or not. Because I don't want man, any man thinking that they can buy me or that they can have leverage against me by feeding me when I was hungry. So you're not redeemed with corruptible things. First Peter 1 Peter 1.23 says, being born again, not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. One of my favorite verses in all of the scripture is that we are born again by an incorruptible word of God. Cannot be corrupted, is not corrupted. And so when it comes to salvation, when it comes to anything, any kind of merit or blessing from God, the devil loves to corrupt that. So, uh, turn very quickly to Galatians 1. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. That's how I learned it, right? Um, Galatians chapter 1, very quickly. Paul talked about, Another gospel in verse 6. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. That there be some that trouble you and would per pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. By the way, I have a theory. It's a prophecy theory. And I believe an angel a being from heaven, from outer space or whatever, is going to, the world's going to say he's descending down, but actually he's been thrown down. They are going to teach mankind a gospel that is not the same gospel as the gospel of the Bible. That's, I believe that's going to happen. Um, and I got it from this UFO movie I was watching. No, I didn't. I, I believe what Paul said. Paul said, though we are an angel from heaven. And I think the Bible's telling you what to look for. Uh, but anyway, how would you be able to identify or know the difference between the real gospel the good news of salvation versus a fake gospel. How would you be able to spot the difference between them? Okay, we would use the word of God, but in, in what fashion? What would we be looking for? In other words, uh, if I had a phony $20 bill and a real $20 bill, if you've ever worked with money they teach you how to spot the difference between them so you wouldn't be able to know a fake or let's say a hundred dollar bill a real hundred dollar bill versus a fake one hundred dollar bill how would you be able to spot the difference huh there's a watermark okay but there's other things in a one hundred dollar bill not just a watermark Okay, 
Uh, what did they do at the store when they, they take a, they mark it, okay? Some sort of mark on there. I don't know what, what all that is, but they know what it is. They know how to spot it. And so that's what I'm getting at. What identifying marks does the real gospel have that a fake gospel will not have? What are some of those identifiers? No. How, how do you know that the Jehovah, do you know anything about Jehovah's Witness doctrine? Yeah? Do you know anything about Mormon doctrine? Know anything about Catholic doctrine? Aaron? How would you, how would you identify, how would you say, how can you say that the Catholic gospel is different than our gospel? Yeah, I know, but in what way? Okay, huh? Okay, well, I'm going to have to work on slow down. All right, here's what I'm looking for. Any, any organization or any religious idea or any carnal idea, worldly idea, civil idea, the difference between the real gospel might want to write this down in your Bible somewhere because this is real simple the real gospel will never require works of any kind works works of the law will never require you to be obedient to let's say a church doctrine or how can I say this Catholic doctrine requires that you attend mass and that you must eat and I used this the other day you must eat the communion wafer on this spot in the carpet okay and it must be given to you by a priest and he must say these words and so on. Can you be saved without that? Yes. Everybody do this. Everybody say yes. You can be saved without that. Because salvation is by grace, not of works, lest any man should boast. And when it comes to works that people put in their gospel, they always boast about it every single time god was so right on this when men do a re perform a religious feat he loves to brag about it or boast about it or he loves to say well at least we do this and you don't do that they always promote what they do versus what nobody else does for instance, Seventh-day Adventists. What is the one thing they do that separates them from us? They go to church on Saturday. Now, can, can we go to church this Saturday here at this church? Can we do that? Absolutely. Do we have to? No. They say you do. They say in no uncertain terms... You have the mark of the beast on you. If you're not going to church on Saturday and you're going to church on Sunday, you got the mark of the beast on you. You are not saved. So their gospel requires a work of the law. The Catholic gospel requires taking the Eucharist. It requires confession to a priest. It requires attendance at their church at least a few times a year. It makes these requirements of performance that are based upon this building that they built. God did not build that building. Man built that building. So that is the key difference. Um, Jehovah's Witness. They require that you go out. And I went into one of their meeting halls one time. You want to talk about a bad mojo in a place. They had it. But I got a peek at a little bit of what they were fixing to do. Up on their stage, Brady will tell you this, up on their stage, they've got a little set set up where they train people on how to get in the door 
and how to sit down with somebody and convince them that Jesus is not God, hell is not real, and that they have to earn a spot in the new heaven and new earth by going around and telling everybody else. This is why they're always out. Always. If you're a Jehovah's Witness and you go to their little lodge or whatever they call that and you're not out at least every week doing the, doing the deal, you are not saved, according to them. You're not saved. So, do you understand now the difference? The real gospel, what had the only, write this down, the only requirement for the true gospel is faith. You have to believe it. And keep believing it. Continued faith in God's word. Why did God take his mercy away from Saul? He quit believing God's word. He rejected it. He rejected the word of the Lord. It's very simple. What happens to stony ground people? They reject the word of the Lord. They got a hardness up here. What happens to the thorny ground people? The sins choke out the word. So they bear no fruit. It's that simple. The true gospel only requires faith. Period. Anything you do above that, you're free to do it. You just can't think that because you're doing it, God is going to extend more mercy to you, or God is going to extend more favors to you, or God is going to give you more money, or God is going to give you more health, or God is going to give you more happiness, or whatever. It's the, you cannot expect that if you do certain things, then God must release blessings to you. He releases blessings to you on the basis of the fact that he loves you. Because do not lost people get to breathe the same air we breathe? Do they not drink the same water we drink? Live in houses like we do? Have their bills paid like we do? Do not lost people attain wealth in this world? And have, some of them have comfortable lives. Just because people are happy or people have satisfied lives or because they have health or because they have blessings, that does not mean that they're saved and it doesn't mean that they earned it from God. Back in 2004, the St. Louis Post-Dispatch uh, did an investigative report on Joyce Myers. And needless to say, and it was very lengthy. I have it. I kept it all these years. And needless to say, it did not paint her in a very good light. Because it talked about all the wealth that she's a accumulated. And how she doesn't pay her taxes and how she gets out of this and all this stuff. And so her, one of her PR guys, after that report came out, decided that they need to make her look good. So they contacted, I don't know who they contacted at the Channel 5, K, uh, was it KSDK? And a reporter went out there to interview her to, and basically made her look good. But one of the things she said, I'll never forget this as long as I live. Her quote was, I am wealthy because I deserve to be. That's what she said. She believes that because she has been obedient to God, that God, that forces God to make her rich. That's what she believes. And that's obviously what she's going to teach. She may teach it in some veiled way, but that's what she's going to teach. She's going to teach that if you be obedient to God, in all things, then he will make you wealthy or he will make you healthy or he will, he'll, or, the, or the company will give you the raise and the promotion while the other person misses out or any other kind of nonsense. The truth of it is, you've gotten a raise and a promotion and you didn't deserve it, but God decided to give it to you anyway. That's his blessings based upon an unmerited favor that God gives you. You're not blessed by God even after you're saved because you try to be obedient you're blessed by God because he loves you the end but isn't it a blessing to yourself if you are obedient to God doesn't that make you happy absolutely so to understand the difference 
between a corrupt gospel and the incorruptible gospel is that the real gospel is never earned or merited in any way. While every false gospel, I mean, this is how you identify them. Every false gospel is going to have a requirement of a work, a performance of some kind, money, a gift of some kind, or whatever. It's going to require something besides your faith. And when it does, the moment it does, it ceases being the true gospel. So, if, if I said to uh, Brother Sterling, Brother Sterling, I have went back in the records and you missed four Wednesday night services last year. I don't think you're saved. Can I say that? I can. Not going to get away with it though. Am I right in saying that? You missed four Wednesday night services last year. I went through the records. Obviously, you're not saved. What if he missed 20 Wednesday night services last year? I still can't say that. What if he missed all of them last year? I can't say that. I can't be his judge. Do you still believe the Word of God? Every word? I can't say to him that because he did not attend a certain number of services that obviously he's not saved. That is not my place and it's not your place. Can I hear somebody say amen? Or am I losing you? I'm telling you, if, you, if, you, if somebody tacks on one performance, it's not the gospel any longer. It's not grace. If it's... Paul made this clear. If it's of works, then it's not of grace. And if it's grace, then it's not of works. You cannot mix the two together. All right, I'm going to move on. The devil, turn to Isaiah. He's crooked. Think about it. Serpents never make a straight line. They don't know how to do it. It's not in their DNA. Serpents, God made them twisty, windy. That's the way they move. That's, that's how they get their bodies around from place to place. They are crooked. The Bible used the word crooked like we would use the word twisted. All right? We also use the word crooked to define somebody whose dealings are not true. Okay, we use the word, we call somebody a crook because of what? They tried to get money out of us um, in, a, in a wrongful manner. They tried to get money or some sort of product or merchandise from us in a way that wasn't equal. They didn't pay for it or they tried to swindle us and we call them a crook. And what it comes from is the word crooked. Their dealings are crooked. And it comes from this idea that a serpent is always going to be crooked. Think about what Jesus said concerning the path that we're to follow. He said, straight is the way and narrow is the gate. We are to walk in this world a straight path. And we're even... When we do our dealings with one another, we are to deal with one another in a straight manner. We, we say this phrase, are you being straight with me? Which means, are you telling me the whole truth? You, are, you, are you trying to deceive me in any way? We use these words because that's what they mean. When somebody is a crook, they're crooked. When somebody isn't dealing straight, they're crooked. Okay, Dealing straight, that's a card term. If somebody's dealing straight to you, that means they're dealing the cards in a correct manner. But if they're dealing crooked, they're pulling them from the bottom of the deck. There's a guy on YouTube, you've got to watch this guy. 
He's been blind since he's nine years old. And he can do things with cards that stuns magicians. He calls himself a card mechanic. He's developed the senses in his fingers that if you, if he, he can hold a deck of cards in his hand. If you say pull out 23 cards, he can go like that. And it will be exactly 23 cards. He knows by the feel of them. There's 23 cards there. And they, they show him dealing one-handed from the bottom of the deck. One-handed. I'm just going, that's amazing. Never play cards with somebody you didn't. In fact, don't play cards. That's not good for you anyway. Anyway, in Isaiah 27, 1. And that day the Lord with his sore and great strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent. And he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Job 26, 13. By his spirit he hath garnished the heavens, his hand hath formed the crooked serpent. Look up on the screen here. I like this, because the Bible's right. There is, if you know where to find the north star, where's the north star going to be? North. Thank you, Wayne. Appreciate that. It's going to be in the north. Always. It's the only star that no matter what time of night it is, no matter what season it is, it's always going to be north. The rest of the stars, if you take a photograph, a time-lapse photograph, they go in a circle like this. Well, there is... A constellation up toward the north and it circles the north star and it's called Draco the dragon. And that verse in Job, by his spirit he hath garnished the heavens, his hand hath formed the crooked serpent. And there is a crooked serpent constellation up in the heavens called Draco. I just think that's pretty cool. Okay. But the devil is crooked. His dealings is always going to be crooked. Which means that he could tell you 20 truths, but he's always going to tell at least one lie with it. Always. Might want to jot that down too and remember that. If a person tells you 50 things that are true, but one thing that is a deliberate lie, that person is a liar. And what he did was he set you up with partial truth to get you to accept him. How many of these uh, astrologers, diviners, palm readers, forecasters, prognosticators, all these people who practice these occult arts, who claim that they can foresee the future, who claim that they can see things that are going to happen, these people can be right one time out of 50 and there's going to be people that's going to follow them. It's amazing to me the desire of most people to be lied to. They want to believe that somebody can talk to their dead Uncle Freddy or whoever or that the spirits can show them something that's going to happen in the future and people will believe that. And there are people in churches who claim that God has given them the gift of prophecy and they can foretell the future. And if you actually look at what they said, they can be right one time out of ten and everybody says, man, they're amazing. Why? He said this was going to happen and it happened. But he said ten other things that didn't happen. And according to Deuteronomy 18, if they're wrong, one time you don't have to listen to anything they say they're not from god god's prophets are always right 100 percent of the time that's how we are can know whether or not they're from god or not so the devil he is incapable that's his nature he is incapable of saying truth 100 percent of the time he's incapable of it his nature is, I mean, go to, um, go to uh, Luke chapter 4. Turn to Luke chapter 4. This is the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness. Was the devil being crooked to Jesus on this day? Absolutely. It says, um, 
Verse 9 of Luke 4. He brought him to Jerusalem, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. Boy, the devil loves to say the word if, doesn't he? For it is written, now he's going to quote scripture. He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. See, he quoted scripture as a basis for his false teaching. The devil said that Jesus could jump off of a cliff because God had to send angels down to rescue him. That's what the devil said. That's a lie. Even though the scriptures that he read is true. He shall give his angels charge over them. How many of you have been in situations where you know angels had you by the nap of your neck holding you and keeping you from danger? It's happened. That Bible is right. But how he applied it was totally incorrect. Snake handlers. Churches. Still, East Tennessee, East Kentucky, West Virginia, in those Appalachian Hills, churches still have people that pull snakes out of a box and dance around with them in their hands. By the way, they get bit and die. Just like real people are supposed to. Because... There's a verse in scripture that says that God would make them, I'm paraphrasing here, God would make them immune for, if a snake bit them, would have no harm on them. If a snake bit them. That does not mean that we can jump into a snake pit on purpose. And God must not let any snake bite us. It does not mean that. And it doesn't mean just because God gives his angels charge over thee, that has everything to do with the fact that we always get ourselves in trouble because we can't see certain things ha that are coming, right? Who's, if you've ever been in an accident, raise your hand. It was an accident because you didn't see it coming and you didn't avoid it. You couldn't avoid it. Okay? Hi, sis. I was just, just fixing to talk about you, now I can't. Talking about crooked things. Yeah, there you go. Arthritis does that, doesn't it? The devil teaches men that because, you listen to this now, because of God's promises that we can tempt God. There are people who believe That they can deliberately go out and sin in the face of God. And God has to forgive them. One guy claims that he could even take the mark of the beast. Because God says he'd never let anybody pluck him out of his hand. That's tempting God. You're mixing a dumb idea with scripture. And my point is, the devil can never say 100% truth. He can never do it. And then God taught us that if somebody says 99% truth and one thing false, we don't have to believe him. And you shouldn't. I only accept a word of God that is true 100% of the time. 
And it's the, if, if you think about it, how the devil operates, he always blends truth in with untruth. So you have these false Bibles everywhere where they say things that contradict this Bible. And if it contradicts this Bible, I can't believe it. I can't believe anything that it says. So if it says, if this Bible says this kind goes not out but by prayer and fasting, and this Bible over here doesn't even say that, then I reject it. Because it's got, if, it's, if that's the only error it has in it, then I reject it. Because I don't trust any of it. You see my point? He's crooked in that he's a serpent. That's his way. That's his nature. But he will always try to blend truth to get you to accept it. Meanwhile, he has injected his lies in it. You should never, never accept that. Um, next Sunday, we're going to look up on the screen. People have worshipped snakes for thousands of years. So next Sunday, we'll get into the different peoples around the world throughout history that have just worshipped Satan himself in the form of serpent worship all right let's go to the lord in prayer heavenly father we ask father your blessings lord i i love this book because it straightens out all the bad doctrines it correctly identifies and measures out what is truth and what is not truth father it's the idea that if we had two rulers or two tape measures and they didn't agree one of them's got to be wrong. And Father, help us, God, to understand truth. Help us to understand the real gospel. Because, Lord, you require nothing. And as far as a gift or a performance from us, you just ask that we believe with all of our heart what you said. And Father, we do. Bless those who believe. And Father, Lord, teach and correct those who have been taught false gospels. Because that's the way of the devil. Bless and honor your word, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen.